Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, everybody. Today, Garrett and I are excited to talk about perfection. This is a a term that's tossed around so many different ways, it, not just in real estate, but in business and life and in all these things. And there's things like practice makes perfect and sometimes done is better than perfect. But then we have perfection personalities that we talk about as well. And so, Garrett, I'm really kind of excited to talk about perfection and more so, are we wasting time on perfection when maybe we already have the results that we want and we just need to kind of take the next step and go to the next level and and move this kind of ship along down the path or whatever? Maybe it would be helpful to start with, well, first of all, good morning. And <laughs> what's kind of like the definition of perfection that maybe we're talking about here to to kind of say, okay, this is where we see people getting too far down the road. And this is the type of perfection that maybe it would be great to have, but maybe we don't need it. Well, this topic has been on our list, Matt, for what? I don't know how long. I mean, since we started doing the podcast. Yeah. This is one of the ones that came up early on and we're like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is something we see all the time. I think where a lot of people get lost in this idea of, or we say wasting time on perfection is that there's a lot of people out there that I see personally that they want it to be perfect. You know, they want their phone calls to be perfect, but sometimes they one won't take the first step until they figured it out that they want it to be perfect, or they just spend a ton of time trying to be perfect in the meantime. I think there's a falsehood in this whole like it needs to be perfect. It needs to be at the best it can possibly be because you can always make it better. You know, Matt, you're you're playing around right now with you know extreme kind of health stuff and taking care of yourself and looking at looking at your day and your time and everything on a whole different level. And I mean, I ask you, I mean, is there a, is there a level where you're going to sit there and go, it's perfect? That's such a great point because that's where I was kind of thinking about this and in, in terms of the definition of perfect is something that's almost undefined, I think, for so many people because you're right. There's always a next step, a next level. I mean, I may feel like a journey on something might be complete at some point and I want to try something different, which will then alter maybe the results in a different way. Does that mean that I'm escaping perfection or I'm striving for more perfection? I don't know. So I think really kind of when we're saying, oh, well, it's got to be perfect, it's almost like an excuse to avoid the consequences of success for lack of kind of a better definition around that. Because yeah, I don't think that there's there's ever a moment where I'm going to be like, yeah, this is perfect. I'm I'm done. Or I might say <laughs> that, but I'm not going to like feel like, oh, it's the the best that it could ever be. Because yeah, there's always a better. Well, so I go to the like the the perfect week that we've created that we use in Ninja. Um, I, I think it's actually the one that's used in Ninja Selling. I think they've used my perfect week, and we call it that. We call it the Ninja Perfect Week. It is the Ninja Perfect Week, and the funny thing is, is it, it's my it's it's my schedule. Like that is my schedule. That is what I used when I was selling real estate. Like there, it's exactly what I would wake up with on Monday, and have in my calendar that I would follow. And I, I always told people it is called the perfect week. And they're like, well, I did. That's how it has to be every single week then. And I, and I always say, no, it's like if everything works just right, it will allow me to have a perfect week. But very often I am like trying to hold that thing together as much as possible. And if I can get to the end of the week with like 80% working, success, absolute success. But that idea of it's like always going to be perfect, I think is where, again, a lot of people get into, well, if it's not that, I'm failing. Ooh. Oh, gosh. No, not at all. Like you, you, anytime you're moving forward, there's success. 
And this way is where we go back into the wasting time on perfection is that people don't seem to sometimes acknowledge that forward movement. They don't say, okay, I was here at point A. I'm not necessarily at point B. <laughs> I'm kind of like somewhere in the middle, but forward progress is happening. That's where you need to stop. Now, again, could it be maybe faster forward progress and all kinds of things that we could analyze to death? Yes. But that idea of perfection, I think, stops a lot of people from going like, hey, if it's not perfect, I'm not doing it. Well, Garrett, you've heard it on, and I heard it this week from a client, you know, the Monday morning agenda rolls in and you get on the call and they're like, yeah, you know, I didn't do everything on the Monday morning agenda and I feel like I failed. You know, I didn't fill out everything. I didn't hit all of the marks. And so everything's going to hell. Things are falling apart because I just couldn't do it all perfectly. I mean, you got to hear that all the time too, right? Oh, I do hear it all the time. And the funny thing is I'll go down to the list and it's funny. They've missed like two notes. They weren't able to fill in all the blanks when it comes to new potential buyers and new potential sellers. And I'm like, that's not the goal to fill in all blanks on new potential buyers and new potential sellers. Like it's just a place to house the new business you've created so you know it's there. It's not like a, I need to have five of each one of these this week. But it's funny is this. This goes. This this is interesting. Never thought about this. This I think relates back to a lot of people that they're like, if you give me a form, I have to have all the blanks filled in. If it's not all filled in and it's all not all completed, like in some way, I'm failing by leaving blanks on the page. It's funny. I don't have that. I don't, Matt, do you have that? That no. Um. <laughs> like I have no problem leaving blanks. It must go back to school. It's like don't know the answer. I move on. Like <laughs> I don't know. But I that whole concept. I, when I when you say like I see it all the time and we all we all see it all the time where people kind of freak out and stress out over it, I always find it funny. It's like, well, what did you do? They're so lost on the things they didn't do that they're not focusing on actually what they did do really well. And it's like, look, like I see on here that you did your affirmations. Was it, you know, they were consistent all week long? Let's talk about that. And we go down that route of going, okay, well, what did you see? What's happening? What's going on? Well, let's talk about the 50 people. And I think it's funny that a lot of times in the middle of a coaching call, they're like, I feel so much better now. I'm like, yeah, because we're focusing on what you did and what, instead of what you didn't do. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is focusing on what you didn't do is part of that wasting time on perfection. It is. Instead of spending time or acknowledging time on perfection. I don't know if that that kind of works as a dichotomy in its own self, but we spend all the wrong time instead of spending the right time some in certain situations, which leads to this, this negative kind of mindset and this negative energy that comes out there. But now let's go to the next phase of this. And when we're working on trying to do something better, it's like, well, I want to perfect my pre-listing packet before I use it, or I want to per perfect the pre-listing interview and get those questions nailed down and understand how to ask them before I actually ask them. And at the same time, it's like, well, you're also running a business, you're running into listing consultations and you're not using these tools because you're scared of that you don't have them perfected. So better to not use them at all. That never really made sense to me completely. But then when I dig into it and think about that same thing from the Monday morning agenda, focusing on the things we didn't do, instead of the things we did do, it kind of makes a good connection. So where where's your head at? Where are your thoughts on how to get past that? Well, it's got to be perfect before I put it in play. Well, so I think like Larry Kendall uses the uh, sports analogy when it comes to like the pre-listing interview and says, okay, so that's like a set play and never, never, never practice your play during the game. That's one thing he's always, and, I, and I've always appreciated that. I've always taught it that way. Never, ever, ever practice during the game. There's at some point though, you need to throw your, you need to say, okay, we've practiced this. We've worked on it. It's as good as I can get it right at this moment. And I'm going to go and we're going to try it in a game and we're going to see what happens. You're going to learn a lot by taking it off the practice field and putting it into the game. Now, again, I'm going to say practice, 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 but you'll never know it's perfected until it's in the real game. Mm. You know, <laughs> that made me think practice makes perfect, right? That's a phrase that everybody says, but maybe it's not practice make perfect. Practice makes you prepared. Ooh, like that. Coin that. Put your name by that one. Done. Trademark. TM. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so practice gets you prepared so you can go out there and see if it works. Because 
the other thing is, is like you can practice in these situations, practice with your spouse, with a colleague, the the pre-listing interview and really get those questions honed in. But then you're going to go put it in play and you're going to get an answer that you didn't expect. It might throw you off. But since you've practiced, you're prepared to handle what could potentially happen next and you'll be able to move on to the next question and then be fully prepared for when you go in for the listing consultation. So, I mean, we do want to make sure that we practice before we get out there, but we can over practice too. You come out of an installation, spend some time going through that pre-listing interview, maybe practice it just before you get on the phone with somebody, just run through it again in your head, look at that piece of paper and so that you're ready to go, but don't put this off for months and months and months and this be going through because then you're just going to get out of rhythm and you're going to train yourself that this is the way we do it, but we're also practicing this over here, but the two never meet. Yeah, you know, I ran into this the other day. I was working with an agent. We're talking about video and she said, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do video. And I was like, why not? She's like, oh, and she had all these things going on about it. And I said, you need to throw yourself into this and experiment with it. You know, and it's what happens. Like I always tell people, if you want to do video, sit down with a recorder, put the camera in front of you, come up with a topic you want to cover and record it. When you're done with it, hit save, you know, open it back up, listen to it. You're going to be horrified by what you see for the most part. <laughs> you're going to pick yourself apart. You're going to be totally hard on yourself. You're going to be like, man, I say that word like that much. Or I have these awkward, weird pauses or like, why do I keep twisting, like doing that with my hair? Um, you're going to see things in the background that you're like, oh my gosh, I need to get a better environment to film this in, or I need to have a different background. And and what you do is then you say, okay, so let's fix all these things and let's record again. And we can delete the first video, it goes away, and we'll try it again. And we're going to do it again. And I always, I told her, I said, do it 20 times, do it 100 times, and then walk away from it for a week and come back. And at some point, you're going to look at it and go like, yeah, that that actually would work. That's, I feel comfortable with that. And it's just like you just need to kind of work your way through all the little – the practice time. But at some point, you got to go live with that. And going live with it would be, okay, I've seen this thing 100 times. I've worked with it. But now I'm going to let my spouse see it. I'm going to let my friends see it. I'm going to let you know my real close ones and go, well, what do you guys think? And they're going to give us a little feedback. They may just say just run with it. And then you go and you put it out there to the whole world. I watch people, though, with like video that they want it to be so bad as we call perfect, like other videos they've seen and other people like vloggers they've seen. Well, I'm like, I'm going to put it out till it's at that level. And the problem is that that's his level. That's her level. It's not your perfect. And that's what you need to start to own is just say, look, it's the best that I've got in me right now. I put my heart and soul into it. Let's go out and let's experiment with it. But don't wait for perfection. That's where I think that hurdle comes in is you just you need to take forward movement and forward you know direction. Yeah, I agree completely. And especially with the topic of video, I went through that same thing years ago when I started with my first video and it was it was really so good. bad. It was really good. <laughs> no, it was so bad. <laughs> um and they've they've changed so much, but I think what's really interesting is is that perfection also starts to come become these um these extra things, you know, well, the lighting needs to be perfect or the sound quality needs to be better. Yeah, those are things that we want to definitely have, but then we miss the value of the message of what we're really trying to do. And I see this a lot with um, autoflow, right? When people are putting together postcards or email campaigns to their database, They'll say, well, ah, I really want to do something special, but I, you know, I just haven't perfected it yet. And so then they default to something that's mediocre. They go back to the generic newsletter like, well, I just got to get something out. So I might as well put this out. I'm like, well, why don't you just – you have your message. You know what you want to say. Okay, maybe the email won't look as great. Maybe you're going to do your first email where you just drop everybody into the BCC field or your postcard's not going to have the the fancy picture on it. But the message is going to be there. And that's really what the value is because people will people will latch on if there's value. They will not latch on if it's just pretty, but no value. And so understand where the perfection is, right? Yes. Well, I think I understand where the perfection is. But I also go back to is like if your heart's in the right place with whatever you're doing, it's going to work. Like you can have the cheesiest video in the world. But if they go that and they look at it and they go like, yep, that's Garrett. <laughs> that's, our, that's, that's the Garrett that we know. Like – they're not looking at that going like, oh, let's overanalyze him or things like that. They go, yeah, that's that came from his heart. That's who he is as a core. I think you can get away with a lot. I mean, even look at like an event. A lot of people that won't throw events because, again, it's got to be perfect. But 
again, if they know that your heart's in the right place with everything you're doing and gathering this group of people together, there's people that will freak out because, oh, my gosh, we're running out of drinks. Nobody cares if your heart's in the right place and you did this event and you're having fun with all these people. They're not like in the background going like, I can't believe she didn't buy enough soda. Like, <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, the the things there for the right reasons, and it's and it's being you know growing for the right reasons. So I want to go back to something you said a little a second ago, Matt, before you switch topics on me because I was had my brain was going down a route. Have you ever read the book Now Discover Your Strengths? I have not, but I'm guessing I should. You should. It, it's an it's a little bit of an older book. Um, Marcus Buckingham was the author of it. He also wrote the book First Break All the Rules, which is another great book. But in that book, Now Discover Your Strengths, and I'm going off the, my, the top of my brain here. I haven't read this book in a while. If I remember right, there's 32 strengths that we all have. One of the concepts that he talks about in that book is that the mistake that most people make is they try to strengthen their weaknesses before trying to strengthen their strengths. Strengthening your weakness is going after this idea of perfection. Um, if I've got, and they really only have about five strengths that were really our core strengths for us, and the rest of them are ones that we kind of drag with us. They're just ones that we've never really been very good at. And, and it's not, it's just kind of at a core of who we are. Like Larry Kendall has a statistic side that is one of the strengths that is, uh, is something that actually can't be trained. It's something that comes with you genetically is being able to analyze data, interpret data, be able to share data. Anybody who knows Larry Kendall goes, oh yeah, that makes total sense. I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, you're going, oh, that's pretty much right. But that's one of his strengths. And he would do better at strengthening that strength than trying to take another you know, piece that he's weak in and trying to strengthen it. You'll get bigger and better results. It's a thing that employers miss out on also. They'll hire somebody on and they say, all right, so we've got this great, great, great assistant we just brought on. And she's really good at this. She's really good at this. She's really weak in these areas. And we're going to send her to some classes to strengthen this stuff, which will then make her the perfect assistant. Well you probably would actually do better by actually strengthening the things that she's really naturally good at already, which goes totally against the idea of perfection. It's just honing in on things you're really good at. You look at th things in your business, you know, the Ninja Perfect Week, the Ninja Nine. There's a lot of systems in there when I'm coaching people that I'm like, look, that may not be your system, but you're really good at this one over here. Own that one. You've done that with lunches. I've seen that with the phone. Um, I've seen that with uh, real estate reviews. I've got people that like, look, they won't pick up the phone at all, but they'll do real estate reviews all day long because it just connects with them. It feels good. They want to share that information, but they'll beat themselves up because they're not talking to enough people. That's that perfection side that I, I stand back from a coach's perspective going like, you've got to look at what you're doing well, what your, what your natural capabilities are and own them and go after them instead of trying to be perfect on all fronts. Oh, I love that. And we talk a lot about honing in on your strengths and boosting your strengths. Gary Vaynerchuk is very popular for saying, you know, focus on your strengths, punt your weaknesses. And I think what's really interesting about that, when you focus in on your strengths, let's use the assistant for an example, right, that you, that you used. You focus in on what her strengths are, send her to classes to continue to strengthen those strengths, and those things that are weak will actually start to get lifted up. Because as you get stronger at something, you'll identify, you'll be like, hey, if I want to get stronger at this, I'm going to have to do a little bit better at this over here. And you'll just naturally figure that out because if we're weak, we kind of like don't always want to work on our weaknesses sometimes um, because maybe it's not something that we're st truly interested in, but if it helps contribute to one of our major strengths then we'll get better at it. Let, I, I mean, the systems, for example, well, I'm not really good at writing notes, but I love talking to people. Great. Well, let's talk to more people. And all of a sudden you'll have some notes to write. Let's do more real estate reviews. And all of a sudden, you'll have a lot more conversations and you're going to have more phone calls to make to follow up on how those trips were, or how the college search is going, or how the soccer game was. When you really focus in on your strength, all of a sudden, the weaknesses will just start to get a little bit better. And you'll turn around and you go, huh, I'm actually getting pretty good at that. And then you'll get excited about it. And you'll be like, now I'm ready to focus in on that too and make that stronger. And it just kind of compounds and... I think that's when the vision of perfection kind of goes away and dissolves. And it's just the vision of constant improvement 
and constantly competing against yourself to get better and starting because when you when you brought up the events and stuff and it's funny oh i wonder what she's going to think if we run out of soda um (laughs) you got to start eliminating that noise from worrying about what anybody else is going to think about how you're doing what you're doing what you're focused on because those are barriers to progress and fall into the excuse of well and you just needed to be perfect before we actually get out there and do it so I, I love that. So let's also define, like, maybe from a different perspective, what perfect is. It's like if you look at a football player and people go, okay, he plays football. Well, what's a perfect football player? Well, in, if by the big general picture, it'd be like, well, it's someone who can do it all. They can throw the ball, they can catch the ball, they can sack the quarterback, they can, you know, make the play, they can run for touchdowns. Like, that, that's a perfect football player. Well, the reality is we all know is that every player on that field has strengthened their strengths. The linebacker on the field has strengthened certain strengths to be a really good linebacker. The quarterback on that field has a totally different skill set. And they're never, ever, ever going to work on what the linebacker is doing. Like they're never going to be there like going like, man, I should really be able to, you know, to crush somebody out there. Quarterback is going, no, keep me away from everybody. Just let me throw the ball. And I'm going to be really good at that. I'm going to be amazing at that. And I think like in, in our business, we've got those areas that we can sit there and say, look, I don't need to do it all. Some of you guys out there are really, really, really good, let's say, at helping people that are, have problem properties. Or some people have people that are you're really good at the estate properties where people have you know, passed away and they've got, they've got to figure out what to do with this estate now. Some of you are really good at helping first-time homebuyers. Some of you are really good at listing property. Some of you are really good at listing problem properties or luxury high-end properties. I would say is that, you know, and maybe I'm going down a tangent here, but I think that, you know, own what your strengths are, own what excites you and go after that, whether it's systems, whether it's, you know, aspects of your business, but make sure you understand what perfection is. Because it's something that I watch people again, as we've said numerous times now, we watch people get locked into this bigger picture of what perfection is. And it literally just makes them waste time where they could be moving forward and sometimes moving forward at a rapid, rapid, rapid rate, but they won't let themselves do it because they're trying to be perfect. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's exactly what, you know, is holding people back. I don't think it's a tangent. I do want to mention one thing about weaknesses though, and it's that don't use weaknesses or multitude of weaknesses as an excuse either. You know, if nothing's working, if you're if there's if you're starting with the system, you do need to explore all things. If your weakness is like, well, you know what, I'm just not good about getting up in the morning and getting to work. Well, (laughs) that's kind of something we're going to have to work on (laughs) because if you're not at work, not making calls, then you're not going to see the success that you want. Or maybe it's we need to find a different career path or find a different level of motivation. There's something don't don't use weakness as an excuse to say, oh, well, I have permission to not focus on improving this. Be very self-aware about what that is. What we're saying is, is don't beat yourself up about the little things. If you're not good at phone calls, but you're exceptional at being in person, then just get in person more. And that way you don't have to worry about the phone as much. And the more you are in person, then the phone will kind of come back into your world. But don't use it as an excuse for inaction just be very, very self-aware. I just wanted to make that comment because I think I could see people saying that, <laughs> taking that and being like, oh, sweet, I could just not do this anymore. It's like, well, not, yeah. not exactly. No, there, there's a well-rounded side to it. But Matt, I, I know, well, I know I've done this. I wonder if you have though. But have you ever been on a call with somebody and said, you know, maybe real estate's not your career? Oh. <laughs> and like, I had a problem as a manager helping people identify the fact that they did not want to be in real estate. They're like, like wait, that's what it really takes? Ugh. Like, what, what made you think this was a good idea when you don't like doing any of these things? Like, <laughs> <laughs> But I, I love those moments at the same time because I heard from someone who, who left real estate and they were so happy with where they decided to go after that. And it just made me feel so good that instead of kind of trying to force them to stay in this mode and be like, no, no, you know, be here because this is what you want to do. Hearing from them about like, oh, you know, life is so much better. I can do more things. I can do the things that I really wanted to do. And I realized where my strengths are. And that feels good too, is, is identifying those. So 
Uh, oh, yeah. That's another part of self-awareness too. If you don't have somebody in your world that's giving you that objectivity and is just saying like, well, put your head down and just stick with that career because that's what you're supposed to do. Try to give yourself that objectivity. Take a moment and really look at yourself and say, am I good at this? Is there something else that I could be exceptional at that I want to do and go out and try it? I, you don't have to like go from zero to a hundred and like throw it all away, figure out a way to dabble or, or kind of experiment with it, you know, before you just, you know, quit and make a transition, but give yourself that objectivity so that you can at least see that path. And it's, I think real estate is an incredible career because it really does fit a lot of different people's personalities, especially when done in the ninja way. It really allows you to work with people that resonate with you. So you don't have to try to fit all the boxes. If you're doing it right and you're growing this thing right in a short amount of time, you really have placed yourself with people that you resonate with, which for me, it's like if you do it right, it really turns into not being work over time. It really turns into being a, a very fun day you get to go have and, and hang out with people that you enjoy. But at the end of the day, too, like real estate is a very malleable, very fun business, allows you a lot of different aspects. You can change it up, come from a lot of different directions. And it's a great career. Um, it's not for everybody. You know, there's a lot of people, like I've, I've had people that have left real estate going, the stress, like I took so much of the stress of everybody else and their situations and their world and what they were dealing with. And I couldn't get it off my shoulders. You know, it's like, it's like for the same reason that my wife, we have a good friend that works in the, uh, Oh, what do you call it? But she she basically goes into households where there's drug problems and abuse problems. And she goes in and her job is to check on the children. Like that's what her job is. And we'll sit and have a beer with her and hang out. And my wife and I will come home and my wife's going, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't do it. Like I would be crying all night long from some of the stuff that she's telling me that she sees out there. And it takes the right person to be able to do it. And I think that, you know, that we have our natural strengths. We have the things that we resonate really well with. And I think that that's, that's where I'm going with saying, like, you don't, it's not that you, you don't have to do that stuff. I think it needs to be part of the equation. We all need to have all that, those pieces. But there's certain things that you need to own that you're good at. And when you find those strengths, try to find perfection in those. Strive for perfection. Like Matt right now, again, you're on this crazy, crazy, crazy health kick, as I said earlier, and you're trying to find a level of perfection that, I mean, I don't think a lot of people are willing to go to. But as I said, is I don't think you're ever going to be like, it's perfect. That's kind of a myth. Yeah. But the pursuit of it is is fun. It's exciting. Like the pursuit is very, very, very exciting. And I think that that's where we should encourage people more so is to get into the pursuit of perfection, but don't beat yourself up over the lack of perfection. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can, you can spend time on the pursuit, which is good time because you'll always want to put it into play and see how it does. Whereas wasting time on it is thinking about it too much, overanalyzing it and holding it back from releasing it into your world where it can thrive. I think that's that's really what we're trying to tell everybody. And you can you can do this in so many different arenas of your life, whether it's professional, whether it's personal, whether it's relationships, whether it's real estate, whether it's your your brain, your body, whatever whatever it is. I like that. Practice and strive for perfection in, in the pursuit of it by putting it into action versus wasting time on perfection by holding it back and keeping it just for yourself and not letting other people benefit from all of that great work that you're doing and that great uh, strength that you have to share. Well, there you have it. <laughs> there it is. So... <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I would love for people who are listening to this. And because a lot of you interact with us, you'll email us, uh, you'll get in hold of us somehow and, and give us some feedback and comments, which we love. And we really appreciate that. But we'd also love to learn more about you and how, this, how these episodes are impacting you. Like, What does it make you think about? How are you taking these hopefully nuggets of wisdom and putting them into play in your business and your life? We'd love to hear those stories. And if you have questions too, I mean, we're happy to answer questions. Just bring them, bring them to us because we want this to be your podcast. We want this to be your experience, uh, something that you can use and have in your toolkit to get you going. Because if this helps you be a better, whatever you are, real estate agent, most of you are, that's going to be better for the industry, which is going to make us happy. 
And Matt, you made the comment of most of you real estate agents out there. And I, I just had a call with a gentleman yesterday um, who's a, an IT worker out of, uh, out of Toronto. And I said, how in the world did you get connected with our podcast? He said, well, I kind of, I don't know. He, he said, I read the book, Ninja Selling, because it just caught my attention. And then I went down this path and I looked out for there for anything Ninja and I came across this podcast. But it was interesting is what he was taking out of the podcast, which I loved, was just how to treat people and how to connect with people out there. But it was interesting because it, it drove him to the point of reaching out and calling me and saying, like, this is like this is what I appreciate about what you guys are saying. And I just want to say, one, thank you to him, because, again, that kind of stuff just, again, makes me want to do this even more and more and more when I'm finding that we're impacting people in that way. But uh, I encourage you all, if you, if you want to share that kind of stuff or share how it's affecting you, please, please do that. Uh, phone, and I will put this onto the podcast right now, the phone for me is a tool to do business. I love the phone. Um, I'm on the phone about eight hours a day. And so some people will try to reach out to me and they think I'm not like trying to get back to them and trying to respond to them. And so email is really good. If you want to throw an email in my world, that's a great way, especially if you want to give me feedback or things like that. I would love to talk to you on the phone and I will call you if I have my moments, but uh, please don't uh, be frustrated if I can't get back to you right away because uh, I'm on the phone. It's hard to do two phone calls at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be I figured it out yet. special talent. <laughs> I have not figured it out yet, but if I do, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be something for the world to to see, definitely. It's going to be more than just this podcast if you figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be big. It'll be big. It's a goal. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, thanks, everybody. We, we really appreciate it. And um, I guess we'll, we'll catch you on the next one. Sounds great. Thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled, to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.